Hello, friends at First United Methodist Church Oak Ridge. Today is Sunday, October 18th in the year 2020. We've all been struggling through a period of separation, stay at home, uh, job disruption, school disruption, and we're living in a period of time where people are really having a hard time getting along. There's lots of conflict, lots of inner and outer turmoil. So today I'm going to be concentrating on the words of Jesus and the words of Paul to remind us of what is most important in the world of a Christian. So let's begin with a reading from Philippians chapter 4 verses 4 through 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. And the God of peace will be with you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It is reassuring to remember that as long as we focus on what is true and honorable, pure and pleasing, commendable, that God, the peace of God will be with us. And it, how important it is for us to let our gentleness be known to everyone. It's difficult these days for me as a Christian because I see so much animosity in the world and I see some of it in the lives of Christians and it's difficult for me to make sense of that because I truly do believe that the way that Jesus taught us is the right way to live our lives. So may we all remember that always, even when we are feeling very distraught very confused. May we remember that we have the love of God in our hearts that can be shared with all the world. Now we're going to be listening to the hymn as the deer, which reminds us that we long for God and that it is very important for God to be a part of our lives, 
the same way that a deer needs water. Our second reading is from the letter to the Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 29 through 32. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up, as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander together with all malice and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This reading really speaks for itself. (laughs) Um, We must not let any evil talk come out of our mouths. Uh, Even in our most Uh, distressing periods of time that that God is in us and that we are representatives of the teachings of Jesus we must always remember 
that to be kind and respectful of other people is so very important, particularly in our faith. Now we're going to be listening to another hymn, Open My Eyes That I May See. Uh, it is a call to bring to us the awareness of God's presence and the presence of God in others that we encounter. Open my eyes that I may see glimpses of truth thou hast for me. Place in my hands the wonderful key that shall unclasp and set me free. Silently now I wait for thee, ready my God I will to see. Open my eyes, illumine me, Spirit divine. Open my ears that I may hear, voices of truth thou sendest here. And while the wave notes fall on my ear, everything falls will disappear. Silently now I wait for thee, ready my God I will to see. Open my ears, illumine me, Spirit divine. Open my mouth and let me bear, gladly the warm truth everywhere. Open my heart and let me prepare, love with thy children thus to share. Silently now I wait for thee. Ready, my God, I will to see. Open my heart, illumine me, Spirit divine. Now the final reading is a reading from Matthew, chapter 15. Then he called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, Explain this parable to us. Then he said, Are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is what defiles. For out of the heart come evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. That final sentence in this reading is a bit ironic for us right now that because we all know we must wash our hands. <laughs> but what was happening was the Pharisees 
were criticizing Jesus for eating what was food that they were not supposed to be eating by the Jewish law. And Jesus explains to the his followers that it's not what goes into the mouth that makes a person uh, unpure. It is what comes out of the mouth. And what comes out of the mouth is an indication of what is in our heart. And if what we say is unkind, uh, is slanderous, libelous, is uh, disrespectful of our fellow humans, then that is an indication of what is in our heart. So may we all remember when we open our mouths that what comes from our mouth is what is in our heart. And may we also remember that many children are listening to everything we say. They are watching what we say, what we do, and they're learning from us. So may we be strong examples of the Christian faith to all the newer, younger Christians in our world. Now we will listen to the hymn, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. Um, this is a, a reminder that it is the fellowship that we all share as Christians that keep us strong. And may we continue, even in these times when we're not able to be together in person, may we continue to find strength in the faith of fellow Christians. And may our congregation continue to stay strong in faith, hope, and love remembering that the greatest of these is love. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love. The fellowship of kindred minds Is like to that above Before our Father's throne We pour our ardent prayers our fears, our hopes, our aims are one, our comforts and our cares. We share our mutual woes, our mutual burdens bear, and often for each other falls the sympathizing tear when we asunder part it gives a sinward pain but we shall still be joined in heart and hope to meet again. glorious hope 
revives our courage on the way while each in expectation lives and longs to see that day from sorrow to sin we shall be free and perfect love and friendship reign through all eternity now let us pray. Lord, we ask for the strength to follow in the way of your Son, Jesus Christ, no matter what types of behaviors surround us in the world. Grant us the sense of peace, understanding, and love coming through the Holy Spirit. Guide us in our decisions in our actions, in our response to others, so that all those we encounter may realize our faith in you and our willingness to be representatives of your unconditional love. Continue to remind us that what comes out of our mouths proceeds from our hearts, and it is a true measure of our willingness to follow you. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. We will close with the hymn, It Is Well With My Soul. Um, this was written by Horatio Spafford back in 1873 when he was sailing over the waters that his children died in when they were in a shipwreck. And the words are strong and clear and, and can be a reminder to all of us that no matter what we face in our lives, no matter what hardship, that it is well, or it can be well, with our soul. May God be with you all this week, and may you be visited by the Holy Spirit each and every day, keeping you strong in your faith, and believing in the goodness of all humankind. <laughs>